Hello, it's uh, Afghanics podcast. Uh, I'm uh, Stepan, my co-host is uh, Pavel, and our guest is uh, a, a former fellow student of mine from American Academy of Bookbinding and a bookbinder, and a bookbinding teacher, a graphic designer uh, from uh, Boulder, Colorado, Brenda Gallagher. Hi, Brenda. Hi. Hi, Pavel. Nice to be here. Yeah. So should we, should we move to some of your books to, I don't know, sort of show and tell? Yes, let's do that. So this is where I sit and do design work. And um, I, I have a lot of uh, tools and materials in here. Um, this is my desk. And behind my desk, I have hidden a plow. Wow, that's and a huge plow. Oh, yeah, I really like this plow. Um, <laughs> it's a Russell book craft and uh, I just, I just love it. It's definitely in the way most of the time. So I kind of just, you know, scooch it back here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a museum then, specimen. Yep. And it's hidden back there most of the time. This I, is, I think it's one of the largest uh, bookbinding plows I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I like the pressure of that one. I like that it's, you know, it's a vice Yeah. and it gets very tight. So yeah. I, I just, I love that. Yeah. Um, this is where I store decorative paper and this is where all my books go that I'm going to show you. And then, yeah, this is where I keep all my stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of stuff that oh, yeah. you need for book finding. And you were showing how people, um, are storing their long tubes of book cloth and leather. Yeah. And this yeah. is kind of mine. It's, uh, they're just paper tubes, mailing yeah. tubes. Yeah. Up there and that's where i keep all of that stuff well this work and, works great and uh, that's that's a great really great solution for storing uh paper and cloth and uh, sometimes even leather yeah so it's just up out of the way and then here's my book press it's underneath the table so i you know climb around under there and more stuff under the table as well oh my god you gosh. like your you tools know. real massive Yes, paper scraps and all the, you know, like, what do you do with all of these boards that you cut off when you're making books? You never know if you might be making a small book and maybe yeah. you, maybe you might need that. I can never okay. throw them away. So I have a few books to show you today. So this book is a book that, um, it's a project that Todd Patterson is doing. And um, he reached out to the to Janine Van Gool, who publishes, she publishes Uppercase Magazine. She's pretty incredible. Do you know this magazine, Stefan? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, she's, she's Canadian, and she writes and publishes and designs this whole magazine herself. Mm -hmm. Whoa. And it's all about um, all aspects of craft and um, artistry and collecting. And this and is, so, is it a quarterly or monthly yeah, I think it edition? Is. I quarterly. think it's quarterly. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, if she's doing uh, all of that on her own uh, uh, every month, yes. it, it, it would be just too too much work to do. It's just right. impossible. Yeah, I do think, yeah, this is quarterly. So this issue is October, November, December. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, she's, you know, we're on issue. You know, she's got about 50 issues. And um, now she is going back through her finished catalog and publishing books that are grouped thematically with uh, content that was previously published in the magazine. Mm -hmm. So this book is called Vintage Life. Um, and it's a collection of, of stories about um, quilting and collecting and a lot of artwork from the 1950s, uh, that mid-mod style. And uh, she has these themed books. They're called the Encyclopedia of, I think they're called the Encyclopedia of Crafts. Mm -hmm. And um, she's published, I think, six of these now. And Todd Patterson reached out to her and asked if he could have a, a copy of this, the first book that she was going to do um before it goes to the bindery and the in the commercial bindery yeah and um 
he, she said she agreed to the projects and said, sure. She said she'd send him a copy. Well, then the printer sent him a box. And when he opened it up, there were a dozen copies of the book in there. And so he thought, well, I'm not going to bind the book a dozen times. So he invited 11 other fine binders or binders to, um, to bind the book too. And then every time Janine Van Gool prints another book in the series of this encyclopedia, she um, sends a box of books to Todd and the next 12 binders are nominated by the 12 that did the book before. I saw these uh, uh, photos of this book on your Instagram and uh, unfortunately the video stream here doesn't uh, uh, transfer the colors, uh, the true colors of the book because I saw them and I was like, the colors are so amazing. I, I want to touch it. And it's somehow these colors are not very often seen in, in the bindings, in fine bindings. So I, I'm, I'm so impressed by your choice and uh, I, I love it. Are those textile inlays? Yes, these are all quilting fabrics because there is a lot of quilting discussed in this book. And so I, I looked for vintage textures and patterns in quilt fabrics. And then I uh, glued them to pieces of mylar that I sanded. And then those mylar discs are set into these little round um, indentations in the cover. I did a raised, uh, this part of this, it's like a muffin tin design because there's a lot of kitchenware in this book too. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that part of the design is raised underneath the leather. And so these set in there. Are the, uh, is the, the lettering hand-drawn uh, by you? The lettering is not hand-drawn on this book. Yeah, it's a font that I chose. It's a commercial font and it's from the 1950s. I just thought it had that look and feel from the 1950s. And um, I had a plate made, a letterpress printing plate called a yeah. polymer plate made. And then I, I wet the leather and uh, used that plate to press the type into the leather. So it was cold stamped. It, 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 it's not hot stamped. Yes. And then I, after it was stamped, I painted in with a liquid acrylic to get it to be that green, that teal green color, which is a very <clears throat> 1950s color to me. Um, and oh, that's the oh I, I love the work you do on, uh, on the book edges. They are um, they're always consistent with, uh, 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 with the book. And I mean, look at those colors. They're so much fun. Is that, is that a small star, small star over there or, or what's that on, on the edge? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little star. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a, a nice, dazzle. nice fine detail. It's, you know, a 1950s iconic design. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put this one away. And then I'll show you some of the other ones that I've been, well, I'll show you some of the older ones first. So this one. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. We already discussed it a bit. Yes. So this one and is the book that I submitted to the open set on the open side. Um, this is a book. Oh, this book is so fabulous. I saw it in an issue of communication arts magazine. And it was highlighted because this man, Alan Crawford, took this book, uh, Whitman Illuminated Song of Myself. He took the song of myself and he hand drew every word of this work by Walt Whitman. And so I don't, I can't even imagine how long that took him. It's printed in three colors. And I said to myself when I saw it, I would love to bind that. But of course, by the time it, fe it was featured in the magazine and I noticed it, it had already been published and it had already been through printing and binding. And there was no way for me to do the Todd Pattison trick and reach out to them and say, hey, can you grab me one before the binding? So I bought a copy and tore it apart. And did the, and I rebound it with a fine binding because I think this is wonderful. So it's printed in red and blue and green. And so my headbands are red and blue and green. Can you see that? Yep. Um, and then since the whole entire book is hand-drawn type, it's almost like he designed a typeface that he continued to use 
throughout the book um, that's his own design. And I love that. So I made the top edge a hand-drawn titling of the book. And then this was the first book that I ever did the trick of pressing with the letterpress plates. Mm -hmm. The polymer plates. Yep. I'm getting a shadow, but let me see if I stand over here. Is that better, Stefan? Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's a bit better. So that's um, one of the books I submitted for the open set. Can you can you tell a bit more about uh, these polymer plates? Because uh, uh, when I was uh, uh, stamping some things on on my older books, I was using uh, magnesium plates, uh, and uh, that's absolutely different stuff. Um, when we go out to the letterpress shop, yeah, I will show them to you. Okay. Um, they are out there because that's where the letterpress stuff is. Yeah. Not because I use my letterpress to do that. You understand? I did that in here. Yeah. I just wet the leather. Yeah. And I did a similar technique on this book. And this book traveled with the show. Um, this book was accepted. In, oh, sorry. Let me get down here. Yeah. This book was accepted into the, the set side of the open set. Um, it's an interesting book. It takes a long time to discuss it. Um, the book is letterpress printed in such a way that um, the first line of text is very high on the book. And it's a letter um, from William Blake to one of his patrons. And the letter is basically, hey, thanks so much for the money. And thanks so much for supporting me and my work. I haven't gotten anything done on your project because I got distracted and I've got all these things going on and I hope someday to get around to doing your project is basically what the letter says. <clears throat> and um, taking that whole theme of, I've run out of time. You know, I was, I was supposed to have you a project. Um, the, the letter is printed one line on each page and it descends by a quarter of an inch mm -hmm. on each page. So the set book that they handed the binders for the open set um, was mostly blank. Mm -hmm. And the way that the, the binders were invited to embellish the pages and the take that I took on it was, um, I started to focus in on that while I'm, I'm running out of time. And all of these words that I have drawn on here are song lyrics for songs that talk about running out of time or falling behind or, you know, losing your hours or um, time running out. And I spent a lot of time on uh, the embellishment of these pages. Uh, so I um, hand drew all this type in here and only underneath the lines so that as you go through the book, um, there are fewer, there's less room for the lyrics. And um, and that's what the design of my book is too. It's a winged hourglass, which is a Puritan symbol of time running out. And there are ancient Puritan gravestones on the east coast of the United States that have that design on them. Mm -hmm. And um, they actually say, my glass is run, meaning my time has all run out. And so on the last page, um, I did a list of all the songs that mm -hmm. I used the lyrics for. Um, and then I made a letterpress plate, a polymer plate of this hand-drawn type, and I pressed it into the cover on this book as well. So that that book is called Happy Abstract. When, when I saw the books uh, uh, of the open set uh, that, was, that were included in the open set competition, and I saw different books, uh, different approaches to this, to this uh, book, uh, the effects uh, uh, when I finally saw your book was much more dramatic because all of the other, I don't know, I'm not sure if, if all of the other, but most of the, uh, uh, of the other uh, uh, participants had uh, left blank pages inside of the book. And then I saw photos of your book and they were filled with uh, this lettering. And uh, it was yeah. like, a, like a shock for me, you know. It, it, uh, I, so our viewers, unfortunately, wouldn't have this experience. <laughs> 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 because I was so impressed by, by your decision to, to, to uh, uh, write all this uh, text in the books. And uh, I, I just 
can't imagine how much time you spent on that project uh, besides making the the binding yes um and that was a good uh less learning lesson for me as well because i i kind of went for it on the pages and it took me a lot of time and then i i i rushed as i was getting the binding done um so i i learned a lot about that too about calculating the time a little better about how long each step takes um because i did spend a great deal of time on this um, and you know what i wanted to tell you that the way that they uh presented these books at the Grolier club and subsequent stops they were supposed to do it the same way they had these little qr codes that you could click on yeah um and they would show you pictures of the inside pages of what the uh, binders had done on the inside pages of each of the book and i thought that was that's that's a great idea a yeah unfortunately not not all the exhibitions uh, uh, follow the same approach because oftentimes you have a book that is open on on uh, on one page and you can do nothing about it yes absolutely that was like when i went to visit the book of kells yeah. in dublin yeah, and it was open. It's open to one page every yeah. day. I think they have a special um, conservator that goes in there and opens yeah. up that case and turns one yeah. page of the book every yeah. single day. So we had we had a bizarre experience with Pavel uh, uh, a couple of years ago. There was an exhibition of a Gutenberg Bible in Moscow. Uh, Moscow has uh, one of the few remaining uh, uh, vellum Gutenberg Bibles. And uh, among other things on that exhibition, there was a uh, almost true copy of this uh, uh, Bible, but made uh, with paper. And it, it was exhibited without any glass or something. And uh, we thought we can go there and just browse through it. And then uh, several guards uh, came over to us and we were like, you shouldn't do that. Stop that right now. You cannot touch it. And it, it lays open over there. How how can can it we touch it? What what the hell? Wow, <laughs> I'm surprised. That's so funny. I'm yeah. surprised they didn't at least have a sign. Yeah. Also, uh, admit it. You uh, you were a bit cheeky doing that pro uh, that Fugit project. Uh, it's uh, supposed to be the ultimate taboo. Don't write in your books, and here you are writing all over it. <laughs> Absolutely, you got it. Yeah, you figured out my shtick. I like to write in books. <laughs> okay, so this one is, um, it started out as a, a class I took with Monique Vallier and I was learning decorative techniques. And um, I created these two plaquettes for practice in her class. And I liked the results of my final design. So I wanted to make them into a book but the plaquettes were already completed. So this was the first time that I've ever tried to make a book to fit inside the covers, which are already made rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's tough. Yeah, it was tricky. And so the binding that I used is called the simplified binding. And um, I, I downloaded directions for how to do that from the, uh, Guild of Book Workers, it was one of the tracks from, you know, really early on, I think, you know, back in the 90s. And um, anyway, I got this book finished for a homework book for Dawn. I, I need to do homework books to finish my diploma at the American yeah. Academy of Bookbinding. Yeah. Um, Is it all, all, all are, leather on lace or you use different materials on the on the covers? Uh, so these are inlays, the green bushes are in inlaid yeah. okay and then the cactuses are on top on laid and this cactus is made of a uh, what did she call it lacunos oh yeah and, lacunos uh, yeah yeah we, we have a post we, we have a post about lacunos uh, on ibook binding on our website uh, made uh, by a fellow student of, our, of ours yeah it's a lot of work and um you're you know gluing together these scraps of pairings and at first I thought, oh, this is gonna be junky looking, but um, I ended up loving it. I think it's it's a really cool material to work with. So these are all lacunos. Uh, this part of the design is, um, I, I used that 
I uh, used a rough grit sandpaper and I just wet the leather and imprinted that into the leather. And then this is um, hand tooled and sanded. And then um, I've began experimenting with painting my own end sheets, which has been really fun. I like that. Mm -hmm. Is this in watercolor? Yes. Okay. So uh, what's, what's your relationship with the uh, book boxes? Because uh, different book binders have a uh, different uh, approach to book boxes. For some, they are just, you know, a function. And uh, for some, it's, uh, it's another piece of art or something. What's, what's yeah. your approach to book boxes? I think um, if you have the opportunity to create another piece of art, why not do that? That's what I think. I mean, you're making the box anyway. So it might as well be beautiful and complimentary to your book. So I think about it as another, a pre-introduction to your book. Um, and I learned how to make those double well, double walled clamshell boxes from Peter at the American Academy of Bookbinding. He has a very meticulous system and uh, it's a yeah. really great class. Yeah, okay, well, this we also we also learned to uh, study together at, uh, at his class of box making and uh, he has this uh, system of gauges to to make the boxes perfect. Yes. This is just yes. amazing. It's amazing and I still use mine every time. Yeah. Okay, so this this book has a long story, Stefan. So I bought this book from Old Style Press in England and uh, it's called The Girl from the Sea and it's a Selkie story. Are you familiar with the Selkie? Yeah. So it's a woman yep. um, who can change into a seal. She takes off her seal skin and she's a woman. And um, this, is a, this is just so breathtakingly illustrated by Michael Onken. And um, when I bought the book, you could buy it in sheets for binding if you wanted to bind it yourself, or you could buy it already bound in a case binding from uh, old style press and the bindings that they were selling that were already bound had a cut, uh, a wood block print from Michael Onken that had a picture of the fisherman holding the woman that he had just found um, on the rocks. And I loved that print, but I didn't get that print. And so I called and asked them and they said, oh no, you know, we only printed enough of those to use for the bindings that we completed. We don't give those out to people who bought the book in sheets. That's so, that's so I, strange. That's I, I think it's so strange. I know, I was a little disappointed. So I, this is the part where I admit to um, tracking down the artist and asking, which is the, you know, hey, I'm a cyber stalker. But I reached out to Michael and I said, hey, you don't know me, but I just love this book that you did. These illustrations just, I think, really get to the heart of the Selkie story. Um, and I didn't get that print and I would love to use it as the front fly sheet of my book. I was wondering if you had any, um, any extra copies of that print. And he was so gracious and generous to me. He wrote me back and said he would love to help me with my book. And he looked in his files and he could not find any other prints and um, he could not find the original block that he'd cut this in so he sent me his original sketch and he said here just take it and cut your own block <laughs> and wow. i thought this is oh, so amazing oh. this is it's, <laughs> that's a true miracle story <laughs> okay so i guess i i guess i could so um, I had his sketch sitting on my desk here in this, you know, pile of things I need to do for over a year. And then finally, when we were all in lockdown, I had some extra time. So I got a block and um, I cut this and printed it um, so that I could have this for the front fly sheet of my book. Um, and then the design of this book, these are all onlays and it's all fish leather. Yeah. It looks amazing on this book and uh, yeah, with all these different colors and. Uh... Yeah. This one was 
was really fun, but it took me a long time. <laughs> yeah. Is it difficult to work with? Um, it is not difficult to work with. It's very flexible and pliable, um, but it's difficult to pair it. So fish leather is the skin of the fish where the scales are gone. They've been removed and the scale pattern remains in the skin. So the, the leather itself has sort of dips in it, little waves. So if you try to pair it, then your knife slides over the bumps and then the, you can easily cut into a part that you didn't mean to because it's not consistently uh, a consistent thickness. It's textured. Yeah, and then it's ruined. Yes, <laughs> and then you have to cut out the piece again. So that's that book. And, did, and you, uh, did, uh, did you color the, uh, did you paint the leather or was it already in all those colors? It's already all those colors. Um, and, uh, 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 could, could you describe it? How is it to the touch? Is it uh, smooth or is it uh, rough like shark leather? Uh, because <laughs> I've, I've uh, handled a book bound in shark, uh, shark leather one, once and it was like holding sandpaper. So this says Atlantic leather. Now, all of this um, fish leather comes from Iceland. And um, it's really a beautiful story because um, Iceland does so much fishing. And so after they remove the meat from the fish, uh, this is all waste product. This would all be thrown away. But if they stop, there's a company that stops and takes the time to preserve the leather and turn it into, you know, a, a material that you can use. Then they use this fish leather for all types of things. They make, you know, anything that you could make out of uh, cow leather, you know, wallets and purses and all that. These ones that I'm showing you here are um, a wolf fish. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the wolf fish? It has teeth and everything. It's one of the most terrifying fish I have ever seen. I'm not sure um, with, with, has... with, with, fish, uh, with fishes, it's even harder because we may know it's, it's Russian name and it will tell us something, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, making translations from English into Russian, it's, it's so, <laughs> just so hard. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just pull out a couple of other pieces so you can see. This is salmon and salmon is the oh. color, the kind of skin that I used on this book. This one we know. <laughs> yes. Salmon this is a, and then the this wolf is amazing. Fish. And it comes in, I mean, they have a dozen colors. Oh, the golden one. Yeah. Um, and my mother sent all of these to me. And again, I had them for a year before I was presented with the exact perfect project to use them on. <laughs> well, that's that's just how it works. You have materials and then suddenly you find some some project to use this uh, all these strange materials <laughs> and on this book they're so appropriate they don't look strange they look like they belong uh, i had a lot of fun working with it i will tell you the truth is that when you get this leather wet it smells like fish <laughs> <laughs> and and is there a dealer in in the united states or uh if, if someone wants to buy it they should go just go to this uh website in yes. iceland oh, okay yeah so there's a sticker on the back of this skin and it says fiskerleather.com they have a great website i think that just like purchasing any material online, it's difficult to get a real sense of the color yeah. on their website. And I find that um, some of the color names are confusing. So it'll say it's dark green, but the skin is actually um, not dark green. <laughs> that might have been named that way because that's the dye that they used to yeah. get the, the color that they got, but it's not dark green. And so it's, it's a little um, it's a little bit of a surprise when you order from them. Sometimes the skins show up and you think, oh, that's not at all what I <laughs> thought I was going to get, but I can do something with that. Yeah. Okay. And then I have my most recent book to show you. Okay. Um, and this is a book that I completed for homework for Dawn. And um, I was 
fooling around on this book. <laughs> like never fooled around before. <laughs> that, that was the first time. <laughs> For sure. So this has a graphite edge with a square textures in it. And there, can you see my headband? Yeah. I guess you can. Um, I was experimenting on this book with, um, uh, let's see if I can make it happen, holding it this way. This is a disappearing foredge. Mm. <laughs> can you see that? Yeah. I wanna, I'll Absolutely. try again. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so I did it with graphite on, oops, graphite on the edge yeah. to hide the painting. And then when you fan the pages, the painting is revealed. And this was the first one that I've ever done. Well, so, I mean, that's, I, that's really I, good for the first one. I was just fooling around and I, I put my name on it. And then after I found the book, um, I came up with the design and I wanted to title it. So I titled it with my name as well. <laughs> and um, that's a pretty fancy treatment to give a book that's titled with my name. But um, this was for practice. But I, I like what I've done with it. I like the balance of the design. Yeah. Um, and then again, on this one, I decided, you know, none of the, none of the papers that I have were an exact right fit for my book with the yeah. right colors and yeah. and so I just painted I painted my own. Uh, when I, when I first uh, saw the photos of the book, I was uh, I was thinking that uh, mostly I I'm, I'm, I may not be right, but uh, I felt this way. But that mostly you will use graphite uh, on the edges for uh, more colorful books or something. But uh, uh, I'm I'm really surprised that it looks. Uh, uh, quite amazing with this uh, gray leather and then just uh, uh, these splashes of color uh, uh, on, 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 the, on the covers. Yeah, the, the pages inside are blank and they're, they're a gray drawing paper. Yeah. And yeah. so the whole theme of the gray was part of the design <clears throat> plan from the beginning. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely wanted it to have pops of color. And I also re I also really like the headbands. They uh, add you. just a splash of color too. A very stylish book. Thank you. And and the lining um, lining in the box as well. Oh, uh, on the spine yeah. of the box, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to show you this is this is my journal that I work in, yeah. and here's me, you know, trying to figure out which design. Um, which design I was going to use as far as which pieces get to be which color and how to balance that out. So it's, it's a window into the artist's mind. Yes. I work like that in my book um, quite a bit. Uh, do, uh, do, you, uh, do you always start from a hand-drawn design or do you design on computer too? I am a graphic designer, so I have a hard time going from hand drawing right to the book. I always feel like there's this computer step in the middle that I need to do in order to um, tweak my design because sometimes you want certain elements to be larger or you want to, you know, rotate them. And I find that uh, I can do that more quickly on the computer. Okay, so this is these are the sketches that I did for, you know, what is this design going to look like and sort of settled on this. Um, oh, okay. And so that sketch went to um went to the computer to get this because mm -hmm. uh, it, it's tedious to draw it out 12 times if you're just going to be trying to do color breaks so yeah. it's, it's nice to have that shortcut um on the computer and then i have one more thing to show you in here oh, oh. okay this is an impressive okay. choice of end bands yes i uh Fooling around with that until I figure out which way I want the M band to look. So what, okay, what are I, what are what are your plans for this journal? Um, yeah, I was just fooling around, Stefan. I think that for sure, since it's like I said, it's mine and I made it. It's got my name on it. I definitely will be drawing in that book. <laughs> okay, so this is the last book I have to show you. 
which is um, the one I was telling you about. Oh yeah, this made... is yeah with with this. Oh, strap, I've sorry. been waiting. I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> so um, you know, this is a bread bag tie book. Yeah. And the this and this are onlays, and then all of the the. Can you see this design yeah. in this light? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the rest of that is blind tooling, and um, here's the top, and. My headbands got a little out of control on this one, but um, but I was learning. And so th <laughs> this is all paper that I, I pressed on my letterpress. And it's a story um, where the, uh, the bread bag ties become the characters of the story. So this red one is me and you know my family, yeah. that's me. Uh, so that's how this story goes. This is the book that I printed for my husband. And that's him and then his family. And then it's the story of us. So, you know, these are the kind of uh, pieces I would like to make going forward. I would like to make artist books on my letterpress that have um, design fine bindings. Have you heard about uh, uh, the constructivist books? Uh, that uh, El Lisitsky and uh, Malevich made uh, in the 20s. Uh, uh, this uh, does strongly remind me of one of his books. It's called Two Squares. It's, uh, uh, it has no words and it all, uh, only has two squares that change positions, uh, sizes and colors and the whole story is uh, uh, told through uh, two shapes only. Yeah. I, I have seen some other artists do it too, and I was kind of inspired by that um, sort of um, storytelling with icons or storytelling with shapes. Um, I really like that idea. So, okay. So, and then my next my next book is on the bench. So this book is the book that I'm working on for the um, Guild of Book Workers show. Mm -hmm. um, the what is it called it's called wildlife uh, and that book is due in march okay i'm gonna take a quick walk out to the letterpress shop now some nice pumpkins over there yes we did some pumpkin carving okay so um I've got a collection of some smaller presses. And there is this. And, uh, then there, there is this uh, cut you used to uh, for the girl from the sea story for the for the oh, and shit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is the block that I cut um, for that, and I only printed it a couple of times. I printed it by hand because um, we were in lockdown and I couldn't get to the Book Arts League where they have a really great. Uh, Vandercook Press, um, but I hope to print that a little bit more, a few more times on a proper press at some point. And then um, here is where, this is my backing press. It took me many, many years to find this press and to get one here. <laughs> um, I'm very delighted to have this. And I'm working on this book with a gold edge. So um, because those the disappearing four edge books are supposed to have gold edge, not mm -hmm. graphite, but I did the graphite because I knew how to do that. But my first attempt was less than ideal. So I will try again. <laughs> um, and I have a guillotine. I don't use it very much. Somebody gave that to me. And then this is a Chandler and Price 8x10 old style letterpress. And I love this press. Um, it was also given to me. The only thing I had to do was rent a truck and go get it, which um, I was able to do with all of the help from the Book Arts League. Uh, those people know their letter presses and they came to help me and they disassembled this whole machine down to just this bottom piece. Yeah. But that bottom piece is probably still 600 pounds. <laughs> um, and we had to get it up seven steps out of the basement. So it was the whole it was a whole project. Yeah. And then this is, you know, my boards yeah. and my my craft paper and all of that. And and your half skulls? My what? 
I saw a, a skull, I think. Oh, yeah, it's just a bookend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happens. <laughs> okay. Um, my husband is a potter, and he, um, he does a lot of skulls in his work. He's, he's pretty amazing. Um, he works in the barn. Okay. Over there. Okay. I just wanted to ask, uh, what's what's your family's relationship with your uh, bookish uh, ventures and bookbinding experiments and all that stuff? Do they share some of your interests, or that's reserved only for you in in your family? Well, um, it's mostly me, but uh, you know, I did have my daughter in my Girl Scout troop, so she's made a number of books <laughs> herself, and. You know, I've, I've helped my kids with some projects in school where, you know, putting it together as a book seemed like the best way to present the project. And um, that has been fun too. You know, we've done birthday parties where the kids make their own little coloring books. And anyway, we've done a lot of fun things with the kids. My husband does not make books. My husband is a potter. And um, he's very active on Instagram and in a way that I, I need to take some lessons from him. Um, he is Clay of the Dead on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever collaborate? Don't you use in lays he makes? Why not? Well, I, I am thinking about it. And um, what's happened is there's uh, the, the project with the Uppercase Magazine continues and Todd Pattison is getting the next group of binders together for the next... Um, the next book in that series. Um, and the next one is a ceramics book. Yeah. And I would really like to bind that one, but I've already been chosen for the project. And there are lots of binders, I'm sure, that would love to bind for that project. So I just reached out to Todd and said, if you have an extra copy of that book, I would really love to bind the ceramics one. I'm already thinking of how I can collaborate with my husband and get some ceramic pieces that I could inlay into the cover and um, that would be so fun. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if it works out. If it doesn't, I'll have to figure out a way to collaborate with him on something else because I do like the idea. When we talked with this uh, uh, bookbinder, book artist from London, Mark Cockram, uh, he told a story about, uh, about a book uh, about, uh, that was a catalog of, uh, of an exhibition of uh, ceramics. I think it happened in yeah it happened in Singapore. He wanted to sort of implement some some elements of uh, of the story to the binding, and uh, he had it, this uh, uh, this student from Singapore, uh, uh, Adeline Ko, and he asked her to send him some samples of uh, of clay from there, and he implemented some 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 elements of ceramics in this book uh, in in the book spine and on the cover. So. You may be interested in, in checking the second video of us talking to Mark Cochran because he shows this book there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that may be of some interest to you. Yeah, I think it's tricky. I've seen a number of books made with um, entirely ceramic covers. Yeah. And I think that although you can do whatever you want as far as an artist book yeah. and use alternative materials and and get to your passion however you get there yeah. but i i think as far as a book that you want to be able to use ceramic is a tricky material to use in a book because if you drop the book yeah you're going to break covers so um i'm trying to think of ways to embed the ceramics in the cover where the cover won't be susceptible to shattering if it gets bumped or dropped um yeah, I think that would work better than an entirely ceramic cover, but I've seen books that were made that way. I've seen a book cover made in Gaudi style, uh, you know, uh, where they take a, a beautiful ceramic tile and they break it into small pieces and they rearrange it into new patterns. So uh, there is a certain irony to it uh, uh, when you, you, you take something that could uh, break so easily and you show it. I like the effect. Yeah. Okay. I guess I guess that's it. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Brenda, for talking to us and uh, telling your story and showing your uh, works and uh, your workshop. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was an honor.
um, and a delight to see you again. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. So um, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to all of all members of our community and uh, special thanks to our patrons on uh, Patreon. Uh, uh, your pledges, uh, at this moment, uh, your pledges uh, cover all our expenses on editing of these videos. So it's uh, very important to us that uh, you decided to support us uh, with your money. And uh, if you want to join uh, the crowd of our patrons, just uh, uh, use the link uh, uh, down below in the description of this video. Uh, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and uh, uh, maybe check uh, audio versions of this podcast on iTunes, uh, Google uh, Podcasts, uh, or SoundCloud. Uh, next week, we are recording uh, a, a, an episode with Ivan Gulkov. Uh, he's a hobbyist uh, uh, printer. And uh, he, 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 he told me that uh, he will show us his setup and uh, some of his designs. I'm sure it will be an interesting talk. If you have any ideas, recommendations of uh, whom would uh, better to talk to in our future episodes, please leave a comment below. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. And by the way, Brenda, do you, do you have any advice for us for, about uh, who we will better to talk to in our future podcasts, uh, besides uh, Peter Garrity. I think that you should definitely talk to Don um, because he's delightful and he's so knowledgeable and his books are so amazing and they use so many wonderful alternative materials, things that you never thought of using on the cover of a book. I mean, Don, he's innovative and um, his designs are fabulous. Um, yeah, he's incredible. I was a little intimidated because I, I feel like you have um, interviewed, I hope you don't include this, but I feel like you've <laughs> interviewed a number of people who are really people who are big deals. Peter Garrity, you know, <laughs> um, I don't feel like a big deal. I still feel like a student. But when I expressed this to Don, when I was talking to him, um, he said, you know, that he's still a student too. So guess we'll just embrace that we're all lifelong, lifelong learners and that we're all on this road for the rest of our lives, picking up new skills and new materials and new tricks. And um, I love that plan for me. Well, that's, that's a very important thing you, you just told. And are you sure you, you, you don't want me to include it in, in, in the video? <laughs> because it's, it's quite profound. Okay. I guess I just put myself in your hands, Stepan. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's that's true. That uh, the thing is that we want to invite all the different uh, 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 bookbinders of uh, all the different levels and experience because it's really important to show people that uh, bookbinding can be quite different and you don't need to be an expert to make a book. Firstly, next next you showed us your work and uh, your work is really great. So. Uh, uh, I, I understand your feelings. I, all, I uh, always feel the same about my own works, but uh, uh, your your work is definitely definitely worth the the story, and uh, yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank you. And, and you've been such a warm presence. You've really lightened up my evening. Thank you so much. It was very nice to meet you. You Thank too. You. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for your time, thanks. and uh, maybe see you in the future in, in a couple of I years, or, or maybe next year. I'm sure, when. I'm sure we can find you a size 13 ski boot out here, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's it. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.